The city is decades behind schedule in fixing neighborhood sidewalks. The city had good intentions when it started working with property owners to fix sidewalks in neighborhoods. Unfortunately, more work was needed than anyone expected, and the city quickly fell far behind. My office recently completed an audit of the city's neighborhood sidewalk repair program after I walked through neighborhoods in Denver myself and saw how inaccessible these public spaces can be. I spent time walking in neighborhoods all across Denver in recent years. I also took a tour with community members facing challenges when using their neighborhood sidewalks in wheelchairs or while pushing strollers. In many neighborhoods, uneven sidewalks, steep slopes, broken or cracked sidewalks, or tree roots create significant accessibility issues. Public spaces like sidewalks should be accessible for everyone. Neither the homeowners adjacent to the sidewalks nor people with varying mobility needs are served by the way the program is currently set up. My audit team found the city did not choose to require compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act guidance in its rules and regulation. We also found city officials severely underestimated how many sidewalks in Denver would need repairs and how many private homeowners would need to make the repairs. In Denver, sidewalk repair has been the responsibility of the adjacent homeowner since the 1950s. City officials have divided Denver neighborhoods into 11 regions. Those regions are prioritized based on which areas had the lowest rates of car ownership, highest rates of people with disabilities, and the most damaged sidewalks close to schools and transit. Another concern I've heard from the community is about how homeowners pay for the repairs. Our audit recommends taking a look at funding and also notes some affordability options that have not been made available to all Denver residents. To help offset the cost of mandatory repairs, the city offers payment plans and affordability discounts for homeowners who qualify. However, property owners outside the current region in the program are not eligible for the affordability options. Officials also say they relax their proactive approach to avoid overburdening residents due to repair costs during the COVID-19 pandemic. Administrators tell us they have had informal conversations about fixing the program's slow progress, such as possibly hiring more inspectors, integrating the program with street maintenance, altering the funding of the program, expanding affordability options, returning to a complaint-based only system, or even shutting down the program. The intention of this audit is not to tell the city to give up on something that is clearly important to many residents. I hope city leaders will use our findings and recommendations to get the program back on track. Well, that's it for this episode of Ask the Auditor. If you have a question you'd like to ask the auditor, submit it to auditor at denvergov.org, and maybe your question will be the next question we answer on the next episode of Ask the Auditor.